The Hall of Fame is one of the most special nights on the WWE calendar. It's a chance to pay tribute and honor legends of the past. It's wonderful to see wrestlers reflect on their careers. We've seen so many fun, entertaining, and emotional speeches over the years. And today we want to highlight the best ones as we list the top 15 Hall of Fame speeches. Before we begin, we'll throw out some honorable mentions to Howard Finkel in 2009. A new inductee into WWE's Hall of Fame Plus. The Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels in 2011. And if you're not down with that, I got two words for ya. The legendary Four Horsemen in 2012. Arn is the brother I never had. <laughs> the Rated R Superstar Edge also in 2012. I'd like to thank the best tag team partner that I've ever had and it's not Christian, it's my mom. WCW legend Diamond Dallas Page in 2017. Never give up the power you give yourself by believing in you. The Attitude Era icon, The Godfather in 2016. It's time once again for everybody to come aboard the and we'll also include The Rock in 2008. Despite the fact he wasn't being inducted, he gave one of the most memorable speeches in Hall of Fame history. Rock bounced off the audience and responded to multiple chants. Two more matches, is that what you said? One against Stone Cold Steve Austin and one against John Cena. The Great One even threw shade at some of the current stars. There was big controversy with the WWE and illegal torture. They would find Iraqi insurgents, they'd sit them down, they'd tie them up, and they'd make them watch copies of the DVD, The Marine. Rock also paid tribute to his grandmother and 2024 inductee, Leah Maivia. Number 15, Razor Ramon 2014. Razor showed how effective a short speech can be. Ramon's induction was topped off by an iconic line that summed him up perfectly. Hard work pays off. Dreams come true. Bad times don't last, but bad guys do. Number 14, Rey Mysterio. Mysterio was extremely thankful for the people that helped him get him to where he is, including his wife, Angie, who put her medical career on hold to support Rey at the start of his career. And she literally put her medical career aside, got a job, and would send, and would send me money. Mysterio also put over his inductor, Conan, who was pivotal in helping Ray get bookings and work for companies like AAA, ECW, and WCW. We always thank God first for the life we have, and then Conan second. Number 13, Fabulous Freebirds 2016. The Freebirds entertaining speech was befitting of their careers. The deceased members, Terry Gordy and Buddy Rogers, were honored by their sons. And the Freebirds also paid tribute to their greatest opponents, the Von Eriks. The induction began with a grand entrance featuring a brilliant dance number. Then who could forget Michael Hayes' fantastic performance of his Bad Street USA song. Bad Street in Oklahoma, USA. Number 12, Mick Foley 2013. Foley looked back on his career and reminisced about his great moments in Madison Square Garden, the building which he was being inducted in. Foley also dropped an elbow and finally pinned Chris Jericho for the first time in his career. <laughs> the hardcore legend finished by reciting the famous line from Rocky that Mick also said when he first won the WWF title. No Adrian! I did it! No Adrian! Number 11, Bret Hart, 2006. Bret's speech is highly recommended. He told tremendous stories about brother Owen, as well as tag partner Jim Neidhart, including one where Neidhart surprised the hotel maid who entered the room unannounced. I just remember just sort of hearing Jim pull, his, pull the whole blanket off, you know, and just be lying there like a big starfish. And, uh, and then you'd see the maid come in, you know, you hear them scream and get out of the room as fast as they could. While telling a story, the hitman made a comment about Hulk Hogan, and the Hulkster's reaction is just priceless. Remember Hulk who, you know, he, he could always stir up shit, you know. <laughs> Brett ended his induction by reflecting on his favorite ever match while thanking the fans. Thank everybody for all the great memories, Wembley Stadium, all my fans in England. That was my favorite match that I ever had. The best chance you have if you want to rise to the top is to give yourself up to loneliness. Fear nothing and work hard. One thing you'll discover is that life is based less than you think on what you've learned and much more than you think on what you have inside you right from the beginning. Number 10, Dudley Boys 2018. The Dudleys followed up a hilarious introduction from Edge and Christian. Christian! 
Get the Dudleys! With an equally funny and entertaining speech, which saw them get the tables after a production assistant tried to wrap them up. Hell, I'm a hell of a good looking black man. The Dudleys also got to share a moment with the Hardys and Legend Christian. It was the first time in 15 years all three teams were all in the same place. Yeah. Number 9, Mark Henry 2018. Henry gave a grateful and impassioned speech, which began with a tearful story about his experience as a fan, where Andre the Giant picked him up after Mark had fallen over the guardrail. This cemented Henry's lifelong love for wrestling. That my favorite wrestler was on the car. That's why I'm here today. Henry also paid respect to Owen Hart. You get the burn when you cry. You wander aimlessly, look into the sky. You feel the burn when you cry. He needs to be here. Mark gave a tribute to his family, including his son, Jacob, who on the night wore the same colour jacket as the world's strongest man during his iconic fake retirement speech. Henry quoted a line from that famous promo, while wearing the salmon jacket to close out his induction. I'm a small Silsby town boy done proud. A small town Silsby Texas boy done proud. Let's take a break from the list now to cover some dishonorable mentions, like Hillbilly Jim's speech in 2018, which seemed to go on forever. He even took an age to say that he was going to keep his speech short, which were famous last words to say the least. I'm gonna try to keep my comments as brief and concise as I can. Mr. T's 2014 induction is famous, as he used it as a platform to pay tribute to the mothers of the world. But I love my mother on President's Day. It was quite entertaining as T went on for so long he had to be cut off by Kane. Sister Lisa. They tell me my time is up. Then there was Drew Carey in 2011, who responded to being booed by bragging about being rich and telling jokes no one laughed at. I'm so excited about my experience here. I'm thinking of changing my name back to Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> Number 8, Stone Cold Steve Austin, 2009. Stone Cold's induction was emotional for a number of reasons. Firstly, due to the unbelievable highlight package that was played prior to Austin coming out. In his speech, Steve personally thanked WWE producer Adam Panucci for putting the video as well as many others together and helping make the talent look like a million bucks in the process. Austin was given the highest honor by his inductor, Vince McMahon. Vince declared Steve was the greatest WWE superstar of all time. The greatest WWE superstar of all time. Austin gave a humble speech that he kept short, which he said was done to respect the wrestlers in attendance who had to get up early for WrestleMania the next day. Steve thanked the fans, his peers, and then closed things out with a signature beer bash. I thank you again. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Number 7, Iron Sheik 2005. The Sheik did not disappoint delivering his speech in his iconic promo style and with charismatic delivery. He spoke about his career, setting up then taking down the rings and traveling the roads till he made it to the WWF and now the Hall of Fame. I made it to the Hall of Fame! Sheik reflected on his greatest achievement in wrestling, ending Bob Backlund's six-year WWF title reign in 1983. I put him in the camel clutch. Give me hell, yeah! And it wouldn't be a trademark Sheik rant without him running down Hulk Hogan. That Hollywood blonde jabroni Hulk Hogan. Yeah! Number 6, Jake the Snake Roberts 2014. Jake's speech was just like some of his classic promos. He spoke from the heart and the words found themselves. Jake talked about how wrestling takes people on ups and downs, and he even had a unique comparison for what the sport is like. I always called it masturbating people's emotions. That is what we do. Jake had a poignant response to the fans cheering, you still got it. You're wrong. My heart and my mind still want it. Then with tears in his eyes, Roberts reflected on how he self-medicated to ease the pain of life on the road and not seeing his family, and how when nearly all hope seemed lost, Diamond Dallas Page reached his hand out to save Jake. Jake put over DDP and the fan support who helped fund his surgery through GoFundMe. Dallas saved my life. I know that. Jake described the love for his family and shared a special moment with his grandson to end the speech. In 20 years of WrestleMania 50, this kid will be there. Number 5, Dusty Rhodes, 2007. All my life I've wanted to be exactly like my dad. 
and realized that I could never, that I could never follow in his footsteps to actually step in his shoes. Your next inductee, the American Dream, he was the greatest talker in the history of this business. The American Dream's induction was incredibly heartfelt, from the emotional embrace he gave to his sons upon entering, to the re-imaging of his famous Hard Times promo. Being kicked off the assembly line here in Detroit after 40 years, they give you a gold watch, that's Hard Times. You look at driving down the road, night after night, trying to make a town, getting $25, that's Hard Times. And you go home and you see people just dying out there on the streets, people crying about their children being in Iraq, that's Hard Times. It's our duty to make it good times for the fans that pay their money to see us perform each and every night. Dusty paid tribute to the fans of professional wrestling. Being a Hall of Famer with these guys is very special. I love you too, buddy. You don't know how much. As he was given a hero's welcome by the electric crowd that were in attendance. Thank you. Truly, tonight, I have wined and dined with kings and queens. Thank you. Number four, Kurt Angle, 2017. Angle's speech was the epitome of his Hall of Fame career. I want to thank the one person that saved my life. She was there at my worst, and she's here now at my very best. And that's my beautiful wife, Giovanna. I love you to the moon and back, babe. He encouraged up-and-coming talent to take chances with their characters and not to take themselves so seriously, just like Kurt did during his time in WWE. And we got to see a few examples as he played some of his greatest hits for the fans in attendance. Give me crack corn and I don't care. I got Olympic gold. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. My name is Kurt Angle and what the heck? I want to go metal with a broken freaking neck. My name is Kurt Angle and what the heck? I want to go metal with a broken freaking neck. <laughs> Angle was all about making moments in his career. It was fitting that his Hall of Fame speech was just as entertaining as some of his most famous segments. I'm just a sexy girl. Sexy girl. I'll make your ankle hurt. Ankle hurt. I'm just a sexy girl. sexy girl. I'll make your ankle hurt. The Olympic gold medalist couldn't have signed off better. In damn true Kurt Angle fashion, Milko Mania was running wild once again. Oh, it's true! It's damn true! Number three, Ric Flair, 2008. Long before there was an eyebrow raising, trail blazing, there was a kiss stealing, wheeling, dealing, limousine riding, jet flying son of a gun named Ric Flair. Ric Flair was, is, and always will be the man. The Nature Boy had one of the longest speeches in Hall of Fame history, clocking in at over an hour. Thank you. Please, please. It was so long, Rick's inductor Triple H had to tell Flair to wrap up twice. However, the crowd didn't want it to end, as Rick gave an impassioned, tear-jerking speech. I'm not gonna retire. I'll never retire! I hope nobody ever went home feeling bad about spending the money to see Rick Flair. Nate thanked absolutely everyone from the talent to the announcers, fans, referees, agents, production team, writers, makeup artists, costume designers, and most of all, his family. My children are the true blessings of my life. They are now my heroes. Thank you so much. Woo! Number two, Bobby Heenan, 2004. Just like his commentary and promos, the Brain's induction was full of hilarious jokes. He had the audience laughing for nearly the whole speech. One of the funniest moments was when he poked fun at the World Wrestling Federation, changing its name to WWE due to a lawsuit from the World Wildlife Fund. This was despite WWE having many animal-themed characters during Bobby's time with the company. They had the three freebirds. They had the junkyard dog, mad dog, Two bulldogs, a Matilda, another dog. You had two killer bees. You had a guy with a snake. You had a Hawaiian guy with a lizard. And the pepper. And the 
Joe Weasel doing commentary with the gorilla. Now, if you think your people over at the uh, WWF now think it's wildlife, you spend one weekend at the Hojo's in Newark with Afin Sika, the Samoans, that's wildlife. Heenan spoke candidly about his recovery from throat cancer, but still found a way to get a joke in about it. You sit for two and a half years naked in a room and watch Judge Judy, you'll go nuts. All <laughs> oh, fame of wrestling, something I've loved all my life. Why did I stay? It wasn't the money, because I love this. I love you, and I love them. That's what it's about. That's what the whole thing's about. The Brain finished with a heartwarming tribute to longtime broadcast partner, Gorilla Monsoon. And you know the pearly gates in heaven? Yeah. It's now going to be called the Gorilla Position. Goodbye, my friend. And only one thing is missing. I wish Monsoon was here. Number 1, Undertaker 2022. Taker's speech was one of the most long awaited in WWE history. He was initially meant to go in the year after his WrestleMania streak broke in 2014. However, the Phenom had unfinished business in the ring. But now that he was retired, Undertaker was ready to stand in the Hall of Fame. Upon entering, Taker soaked up the boisterous reaction from the fans. They just kept chanting and cheering, to the point where we actually got to see the mythical Phenom tear up. Undertaker spoke about the mental moves that got him through his career. Make these three mental moves part of your life too. Perception is reality. Respect and loyalty go a long way. And no matter what, never be content. But I want to thank you for reminding me at a time when my confidence was at its lowest of who I really am. Your words that day got me through that match and it got me through the rest of my career. He remembered his friends that have passed. Traveling up and down the roads, drinking whiskey and playing dominoes. Brian Crush Adams, another brother taken way too soon. There's not a day goes by that I don't think about him. And shared some jokes with rival, tag partner and brother, Kane. I didn't get mad when you stole all my moves. We got to see Taker's softer side as he spoke to his young daughter. Oh, baby girl, I hope that never changes because you're perfect just the way you are. My mom, she's been on me for years. When are you gonna get that damn ring? Well, mom, we did it. And there was only one way The Undertaker could finish his speech. I will rest in peace. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our similar video where we rank the top 10 WWE promos that will make you cry. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.